Yeah, my name is Tony Lelitlaka. Uh, I was born in a small village outside Mtata called Ngambeldan uh, on the 22nd of September 1973. That is when I was born. That makes me 48 years old. Chop Setuga, age 43. I was born in Gumbo, a small village in the Transkei, situated on the N2. Hasiboni, Philip Kekana, my age I'm 55. I was born in Soweto, South Africa. I am honored to have this opportunity to participate in racing the Kailami 9 hour which, uh, with my racing partners Chops Poga and Philip Kekana. The goal here is to probably thank them for what they endured, what they've been through and as heroes, give them a standing ovation of saying, we recognize you, the kids of the future know what you've been through, and the motorsport fraternity thank you for your contribution during those days, and heighten the awareness of saying, if we want to be better as a society, we must not do this. Your kid, my kid, the guy next door, if he's got talent, Let's support you. Well, I've, I've had quite a number of uh, moments which I would deem as the highlights of my racing career. Because from where I come from, the background, the background of growing up in a rural village, so everything you achieve in life becomes sort of a highlight. So winning a championship was a highlight. Racing the Mercedes-Benz super truck was a highlight. Going overseas and doing tests in Snetterton was a highlight. Um, being part of the first 25 hour endurance race in Spa, Belgium was a highlight. And also testing in America, the Indy Lights was a highlight. We just never seemed to have that breakthrough or somebody just willing to take a chance and, and, and be betting in your corner. Well, I always knew that um, in South Africa it was always going to be difficult at the time in which I came into the sport to make it a full-time career and, and use it to give you the earning capacity to propel you to the different levels and different heights you would want to achieve in life. And I knew then that it was never going to be something that you would look at and think you'd wake up every day and, and get good earnings out of. It was just a situation where I needed to make the best I can with what I had at the time. Uh, the biggest championship I went through is production cars. Uh, 2002, I won the championship with Toyota and Sasol. I think uh, after I won the championship, I should have gone to, I was supposed to race the, one of the PMs in the touring cars, but uh, they stopped me from doing it. And then I think it was just politics that I didn't even want to get involved in. And then I was like, uh, I did have an opportunity also to race in the States. Also, that one was stopped. I had so many opportunities to go overseas, but because of politics in the country, it stopped me from doing it. My famous saying that we must always lift as we rise. The more I spent on the sport, the more I started seeing the unfair inequality in the sport. That's when I started seeing the hugely missed opportunity of living as one. As soon as I started recognizing and it was glaring in my face how we were so divided but one in this country and I then thought, thought to myself that what can I do to, to bring this to the fore and place the glare of this injustice to our faces. I said, you know, the best thing to do, let me find out some heroes 
and heroines that have walked the journey before me, that had the first taste of this injustice. Let's support people because all of us deserve a chance. This year, I was honored by the Stuart White's family to help place Stuart White in a GT car in, in Europe. I jumped like a kid and went to my wife and my kids and said, look, Stuart, who's in our development team, has an opportunity to go to Europe. With our little contribution, we can put him there. And I thank him for this. And we, we sponsored Stuart and to go and live his dream. This is the heart and the consciousness that I would uh, probably ask all of us to do for each other. We are a continent of over a billion people in Africa. How long and what would it take to be recognized by the world as deserving to have motorsport? To have a recognition that we deserve to be given a chance, not just as reason, as kids that want to be mechanic, media people, artisans, Formula One drivers. How long would the world sit and ignore this? How long will our consciousness not prevail to say, there's a continent that we've taken so much from. Let's go back and give. Because the giving is not about the racing. It is all the spin-offs that come through with the racing. When? What would it take? What would it take for motorsport to recognize the contribution that they can do in society in order to create change and opportunity? Here we are, crying to the world to say, Come help, come help, we here. There could have been a, a steward out of jobs. There could have been a Hamilton out of jobs. If we just cared, I just think we don't care enough. So that is basically my dream, to be recognized, to have this country recognized, this continent recognized. Fair chance, we race as one, we do matter. We are here. That is just my vision. That moment is going to be very special. That nine hour on the grid, everybody there, national anthem. Uh, it would be probably one of my happiest days. A dream come through. There's a lot at stake. The value of being part of a nine hour is of great deal. I panic, like um, like I'm crippled, you know, until I'm off the grid. And I think it's what is going to be excitement because of it's something as a racing driver you wish to be there. So for us standing in that grid as an all black African team, I'll be so proud and I hope 10 15 other guys that will be watching will have their kids dreaming to stand there one day. That will be a proud moment for me. The thing is, it is real now. It is real now because the foundation has been laid. We started uh, the GT3 uh, a series in South Africa. It's called the South African GT uh, uh, Racing. A real fact that says, Today, motorsport in our country is seen as a sport of the few. It's for the privileged. I wanted to challenge and say this is not the case. If we support the sport as families, starting from cutting, going to Polo Cup, GTC Racing, and up to our series, there's space for everyone. The space for everybody, we can be there as contributors, whether you're a mechanic, whether, in fact, by the way, we have 
the most mechanics on cutting and follow cup of color these days. The foundation is there. So we will realize this dream. We've been going around and asking for sponsorship to support this dream. Unfortunately, no one has raised his hand yet. The change of dynamics in corporate world, which places me in boards or in top positions of big companies. And unfortunately, I don't know anything about motorsport makes it difficult for these companies to come back. I talked to a board that's like me, that was born in Namakwe or Tandun Namidlana, and we probably half the time when we're free, don't even talk motorsport, we talk about other sports. This reality has made sponsorship and support for, for our kids to dry up. I'm asking those people that are sitting in those positions of power and influence. Government and ministers, I'm appealing to them to start understanding or at least listening to this appeal and this point.